Thanks for checking out this video. Uh, I'm going to talk about Monster Mania, uh, Monster Mania 40 to be exact, that just happened, uh, just finished over the weekend. I went to the Saturday one. You can do Friday night, Saturday all day or night, and Sunday all day or night. Or you can get a pass for all that. They also have like VIP. They have like pre-show where you can get in like an hour early uh, to see the vendor table and stuff like that, which is what my buddy and I did on the Saturday because Robert England was going to be at the convention and we wanted to make sure that we would be there very, very early because we knew that he would be very, very popular as most people watching this would assume as well. So just kind of want to talk a little bit about the convention in general and how that went. Overall, had a very good time. It was pretty seamless. Uh, they did a really good job this year. Um, so Monster Mania, very good job. Uh, in stark comparison to the last one that they had in March, they had a lot of problems there. I know what they've been saying about that and all the issues they had is that uh, there were a lot of counterfeit wristbands that are your pass to get in that were going on. And um, that's what caused the crazy influx in people. Uh, it ended up having a situation where the fire marshal showed up and they started limiting people going in because they were over capacity so it was a situation where people who literally had some passes you know the wristbands had purchased them or had to wait outside of the hotel which was the crown plaza hotel in cherry hill new jersey they literally had to wait outside for other people to come out in order for them to start letting other people in and it was just like a mess the huge influx of people ended up causing issues with lines for autographs, but also with like their photo ops. They have a photo op area where you can get photos done with the celebrities, uh, just you and them, and they're like high quality, really nice, and then you can try and go and get those signed. But um, they had a lot of problems with a lot of things, and some people who even had ended up purchasing uh, couldn't even get in uh, because of all these issues. So I think in the end they did refund money for a lot of people, uh, but the but the big thing for me is that they they took care of things with the the one that we just had in August the number forty they really really stepped it up they limited ticket sales that's another thing in March they weren't limiting ticket sales uh, I know they'll say that it was all the the counterfeit wristbands that that was the problem um, oh and also people reselling their bands when they left they would like take them off and resell them and give them to people, which I don't doubt that happening. I could definitely see that type of stuff happening, especially because with their staff, they were so understaffed for how many people were there, which I'm sure they didn't realize it would be that many people. Um, but they couldn't check all the bands at, at, back in March. They really, the, Their staff really couldn't, and I don't fault them for that. It was just too hard. So this time around, they did scannable bands, which was super, super smart. Uh, they have like a kind of like a little chip inside of them so that literally they had like these kind of choke points to get into the vendor area, to get into the autographing area. And people could get into the hotel lobby with no problem. But then to get back into like the vendor areas and autograph areas, you had to be scanned in, which worked very, very well. They really took care of that. Things were very smooth, stark contrast to what happened in March. They really stepped it up. They took care of those issues and it was great. So what did I do there? I mainly just want to talk about um, not just, you know, how things went, but what did I do? What did I have fun with? So the big thing for me is autographs there. I don't really buy much in the, tr in the way of stuff from vendors. Uh, every now and then I will when it's something I feel like, oh, my God, I, I have to have to have this. But um, really don't get a whole lot of stuff because I'm very focused on just using the amount of money I allotted for myself for autographs because I really like to, you know, get horror autographs. But I will say as far as vendors go, there are a few vendors there who I really enjoyed and am thinking about purchasing some of their stuff online. Uh, there was one guy, I didn't even catch what the company was. I wasn't thinking. I was literally thinking about purchasing and then I was like, maybe I'll come back later uh, but I ended up not, but it's, I don't know if people have seen it before. It's like VHS tapes with like a horror movie on it. And then they have like lights on the inside, like wrapped around the reels. So it like lights it up and it, they look super cool. And this guy was doing it only for like 20 bucks a pop, which was a really good deal. But I was like, do I really have a place to display that? Do I really want it? So I was like hemming and hawing. So I might try to go online and look for it, but uh, they had a really cool Phantasm one that had, like, green lighting in it. And then they had a really awesome Shining one that had blue lighting in it because there's a picture of, like, Jack Torrance on it and said The Shining. So the blue with, like, the fact that he was frozen. Um, 
spoilers. I mean, if you haven't seen it by now, though, <laughs> shame on you. The spoiler's not that big of a deal. Um, but the, some of the other ones, uh, had a really good time talking to, ooh, sorry, try to make sure my ring light doesn't really cause too much reflection. Vinegar Syndrome. Had a really nice time talking to one of the guys at the Vinegar Syndrome uh, table. I I don't think I even asked his name. I feel bad about that. I want to say his name was Chris for some reason, but I may very well be wrong. I'm probably wrong. But a uh, really nice guy who was there. He was telling us some really cool things, just like pointing out uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. It was just like, this movie's crazy, this movie's crazy. Vinegar Syndrome does a lot of more fringe things that they, they put out. Um... Not like mainstream studio stuff, but like smaller, more independent things like sex exploitation films and horror and you know stuff like that. But um, they had some really interesting stuff, and the fact that the guy would just like in depth talk to you about what each of them were, and he was very, very passionate about it. So that made me really excited about Vinegar Syndrome. I didn't purchase anything because, as I was saying, I was saving all my money for the autographs. But I grabbed the card because I do want to check them out online. Um, few in interesting films there uh they do some restorations too so they had like basket case which if anyone's seen the movie basket case like it's it's nuts if you haven't you definitely should see it it's it's worth it um the other cool vendor i did pick up a card from was nightmares unlimited so just there we go nightmares unlimited you can find them on Facebook. Uh, so this guy makes like prop replicas kind of, and it's like a bunch of like Freddy gloves, and he does like the phantasm like sphere with the, the prongs coming out of it and like the drill and stuff. So he does a, bu a bunch of different variants of those things, including like an eyeball coming out of one of the phantasm balls, and he'll like mash things together too from time to time, like a Freddy glove with the um, syringes on the end of it, but it's reanimator, so it's like neon green in there and it has like a picture of herbert west on it like just cool things like that like uh, and a bunch of them so you should definitely check out that stuff like really really interesting stuff so nightmares unlimited nightmares unlimited check out nightmares unlimited i really wanted to get one of those phantasm uh replicas ah, it looks so good just look it up you'll know what i'm talking about it was like 150 bucks and once again i was like Yep, yeah, trying to save this money for the autograph, so I'm going to look online, I'm going to think about it, maybe it'll be like a birthday present for myself next year or something, because it's a really awesome display piece, like really, really awesome, especially if you're a Phantasm fan, but check those out. So that was pretty much it about for like the vendors, so I did want to say stuff about the people I met to get autographs from, the celebrities. Uh, I'll start with the, the lesser, not that they're lesser people, but the lesser of fame people, uh, we met Rob Schneider. Uh, I didn't get anything signed by Rob Schneider. I wasn't wanting to really meet Rob Schneider, but he was a nice guy. My buddy really wanted to meet him. He got a Deuce Bigelow thing, um, picture signed, and he wrote, my friend's name's Rich, but he has him write out Richard, and he said, to Richard, a good gigolo. <laughs> I just thought it was pretty funny, but he was really nice. He took some time to just kind of chat with us. Obviously, he wanted to talk about what he was doing, um, Currently, he has a show on Netflix called The Real Rob, or I think it's just called Real Rob. I don't know if Thuz in there, I can't remember, but he was really saying, oh, check that out if you like my stuff. So, he was just a nice guy to talk to, was, you know, more than willing to talk about some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, about some of the SNL skits he did and stuff like that. So, that was nice. Uh, Billy Zane was there. We did not meet Billy Zane, but he was right next to Rob Schneider, and at one point, Billy was walking uh, away from his from his table and my buddy rich was just like yo billy zane and without skipping a beat he keeps walking and just goes every day <laughs> and just walked on and it was one of the best <laughs> oh sorry about that it was one of the best responses just like automatic responses i've ever seen like billy zane's the man so that was fun i met shannon elizabeth so this is where we start we pick up with my actual autographs that i got so i met shannon oh, God. i'm sorry with the glare Try and, like, get it in a position so you can see it pretty well like that. No glare. Sorry, guys. Yeah, but you can see it well enough. So I got Shannon Elizabeth signed a sc thing for Scary Movie for me. Um, she she was really nice. Um, she, I, you know, I don't know if this is how she is just in normal life, but she's, like, super saccharine, like, overly nice, in my opinion. Seemed really fakey, but that just might be how she actually is in real life. And just to me, it seemed like that. But, she, you know, she wasn't rude to me or anything. She was 
quite nice, like chatted a little bit about her stuff. Because I wanted to say, you know, I liked her in 13 Ghosts, I liked her in Scary Movie. Um, obviously, she did. I, I didn't bring up American Pie because I just have this feeling that, like, most likely whenever people, like, guys come up to her at conventions, she probably just feels like, oh, they saw me naked in American Pie and that's why they want my autograph. Which for me is, like, not the case. I mean, obviously, I saw American Pie movies. But it's not the case. Like, I respect her. I've seen a lot of things she's been in, so I kind of felt like it was cool to get her autograph for that. And, I, you know, I really like Scary Movie, the first two Scary Movies, and she did a really good job. And 13 Ghosts. 13 Ghosts is a good movie. It is a remake, but, you know, it's fun. A lot of good visuals, and there, there's good acting in it. So, Also, Matthew Lillard's in it, and I really like Matthew Lillard as well. He's great. So, yeah, meeting her was fine. That was cool. Uh, the other one, another one. I only have two other ones that I got. Uh, Justin Wong was there. So I got him. I know probably a lot of people are going to see this and be like, what the f... Why would you get him... <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are like, why would you get him to sign something from Tusk? So the main reason for that being, I like Justin Wong. And I've not seen the Jeepers Creepers movies. So if I had seen them... At that point, and I really liked him, I would probably get him to sign a Jeepers Creepers thing because that's way more horror than something like Tusk is. Because Tusk, like, is horror, but it's kind of, like, comedic, like, it's dark humor. Um, but I really love Kevin Smith. I'm a big Kevin Smith fan. And he did Tusk, and he, like, talks trash about Tusk all the time. And he's just like, that's the movie that ended Justin Long's career, and that's the movie that ended my career, and it's such garbage. And I just, like hate how self-deprecating he is about it, because it's not a bad film. Like, it's it's a decent film if you watch it for what it is, and there's some really good stuff in it. Like, the acting was super good. The script was not bad. It was, like, good script. It's just people... I feel like people didn't know how to feel about that film, because it was kind of ridiculous in concept, but executed really well. So I think people are just kind of confused, so they're like, well, I don't like it, you know? But... So I wanted to get him signed something from Tusk because I'm a big Kevin Smith fan, so that connection, he always connects in my mind to Kevin Smith. Um, but I did tell him when I met him that um, one of my favorite roles of his was Brandon St. Randy and Zach and Mary make a porno that Kevin Smith also did, and he kind of laughed about that, and he's like, yeah, you know, thanks, thank you very much. Um, but he was super cool. He was down to just, like, chat for a while he looks like he hasn't aged at all. That guy looks the same. So good for him. Um, but I started talking to him about Moose Jaws. If people aren't familiar, Kevin Smith is working on another film um, that's in the trilogy. It was Tusk, Yoga Hosers, which I, I can't recommend Yoga Hosers, but it's also not as bad as I assumed it would be based on the trailer. So I don't know. So the third one in the trilogy, he wants to make one called Moose Jaws, which is going to take place in Canada, and it's kind of like Jaws, but on the land, and it's a moose instead of a shark. So, I mean, I'm in just because I like Kevin Smith, and I'll see pretty much anything he does, uh, but I assumed that Justin Long would probably be in it, so I started talking to him about it, and he was like, oh yeah, can you know, Kevin told me I'm going to be in it, so, and he was like, is it happening? And I was like, well, I heard like a month ago on one of his podcasts that he got money for it like he has funding at the moment he's like oh okay and I was like you gotta check in with him then he's like yeah yeah I'll contact him uh, see what's going on with that so when I got back to my house I took a picture of the autograph and I, I tweeted it out and tagged Kevin Smith in it and said you know just got this aut autograph from Justin Long talked to him about Moose Jaws he said that you know things look good he should be in it and, and so I was just like Kevin Smith call your boy and lock him into this film and uh, it was cool because Kevin Smith liked my tweet. So hopefully that means that that got Kevin thinking and was just like, yeah, I need to call Justin and lock him in for this movie. So fingers crossed. I like Justin Long. He was really nice, and I like the stuff he's done. Oh, and if people couldn't read it because I was trying to, like, show it without glare, uh, it says, I hope this doesn't happen to you. So Justin Long hopes I don't get turned into a walrus, which was a really nice, you know, kind of personalized-ish thing that he put on there. I like that. Now, the piece de resistance for this convention, as I talked about it, Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England, was there. Uh, I feel bad because I'm sure a lot of people who wanted to get his autograph did not get his autograph. The thing was, first of all, in addition to pretty much everyone probably wanting to get in line for his autograph, he takes a lot of time 
with the people he meets. So he doesn't just like take whatever you want to get signed and just sign it and be like, oh, good to meet you, bye. He tells stories. He answers any questions you have. He just wants to create meaningful interactions. And that's something I'd heard about him. And it kind of sucks for people who want to just get his autograph because it makes the line go pretty slow. But for the people who do get to meet him, it's more than just, hey, I met this person and they slapped their autograph on this thing. Um, so it's kind of like this catch-22. I got lucky, my friend and I got lucky because we got in line at the right time, super, super early. Uh, we just missed the cutoff for getting stuck for waiting like another hour, hour and a half because he was going to have to go do lunch and do his photo ops and stuff like that. So we were very grateful for that. Literally, they cut the line off two people behind us for that. And we were like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Because otherwise we'd be here another hour, hour and a half just waiting in line. So all in all, we were in line for like three hours waiting for um, for Robert England. But uh, I'd also waited in line years ago for George A. Romero for about three hours as well. So, you know, it I wasn't too concerned. Plus when you have a friend with you and you can just chit-chat the whole time, it makes time go a lot faster. But... It was cool. Um, they they did a really good job. Monster Mania did because they didn't have people just standing. They actually had like these kind of like banquet rooms, and they set tons of chairs up. So what they're doing is allowing people to sit in the chairs, um, and they had it in two rooms: the room where he was signing, and then an additional room, and then there was like a standing line outside of that additional room, and then people would just kind of like filter in, and as you know, the autographs were done, everyone would get shuffled up. So it was nice to be able to be sitting, and we were sitting for like the, the entire three hours since we got there early enough, so that was really nice. So when you're in the room where um, he's signing, you can hear what he's saying to other people and just see other people's reactions and what they're getting signed. And uh, it was cool because he did some some Freddy Krueger voice from time to time. He did like, next victim, and everyone, you know, like lost it. Uh, but he's just, he likes to entertain, and he likes to tell stories and, you know, give information, and it was just really nice. So when I did get up to talk to him, uh, we chatted about, um, well, I, I listened to a podcast called Postmortem uh, with Mick Garris, and if people don't know, Mick Garris is a horror writer and director who's really underrated, and actually, Robert England said so himself when I was talking to him. Uh, he was like, Mick Garris is a great guy, and he's totally underrated, and I was like, I agree with that. So I was just telling him that I listened to that podcast, and Robert England was on and was an interviewee by Mick Garris, and I was like, that was, like, honestly the best interview I've ever heard of, like, anything. Like, he is crazy entertaining. He's a super smart guy. He's had such interesting stuff to say, and so I was just like, I just loved it. I just wanted you to know that. So then talking about Mick Garris kind of went to um, talking about The Shining because Mick Garris was involved with a um, miniseries adaptation from Stephen King's book The Shining, and he was talking about how Stephen King hated Stanley Kubrick Shining, which I which I've known about that. But he actually liked the mini miniseries that Mick Garris was involved in because it was closer to the actual book. And we were just talking about, and I was just like, I was like freaking out in my head because I'm just like, I cannot believe that Robert England is currently talking to me about one of my favorite movies, The Shining. Like, it's crazy because like I love him. I think he's awesome. And he's such an icon. And here he is talking to me about one of my favorite horror movies. And it's just it's a unique experience. And that's one of the great things about people like him is he's interested in creating those unique experiences for his fans when he meets them. And I really like that. But I do have to tell you this amazing quote from him. I will never ever forget it. And I have to pass it on to you guys. He was talking about the big difference between the Shining series and the Shining movie by Kubrick. And he said the big difference is that Jack Nicholson's character was more already kind of bad before he got to the Overlook Hotel, whereas in the miniseries it was more he was like closer to the book. He was less, way less bad, not really bad. And then when he got to the Overlook Hotel, the Overlook Ho Hotel is what made him bad. And you kind of see that pro uh, progress or process of becoming bad. And so when he was talking about that, he broke it down and he said... Because when he when Jack Torrance goes to the Overlook Hotel, the devil already has one finger up his ass. And I was just like, first of all, that's a hilarious quote. Second of all, that's a very unique quote, and I will always remember that. So I was just like, that's awesome. I can't believe you just said that to me, and I will always remember it, and I'll pass that along to people because it's hilarious, and it was cool. So, 
Uh, but let me show you what he signed. Um, I'm not, unfortunately, you know, one of those people who does the super unique stuff. There were people bringing, like, huge posters that looked really awesome and, like, dolls and figures and Funko Pops and all this kind of stuff. I, I like small things that I can display on my walls, um, and this is how I've been doing it for these horror autographs for a long time, so I just stick with it. So I just got one of his pictures, and it, he put Fort Carlin, Sleep Kills, Freddy K, and then signed it, Robert England down there. It looks really good. It looks really good, and uh, it was awesome. I will say, uh, people are probably wondering, well, how much were the prices? So... Shannon Elizabeth was $40, uh, Justin Long was $40, Rob Schneider was $40. A lot of the people on that level were $40. Um, Robert Engel was 100 bucks, which when I was like waiting in line, people would ask, like, do you know how much it is? How much is it? And he'd be like, it's $100. And everyone's reaction was the same. They'd first go, oh, my God, are you serious? And then they go, well, it's worth it. It's Robert England. Which, you know, what are you going to do? If you actually want to meet him, you'll spend that money. I mean, he's horror royalty, really, so what are you going to do about that? And I did. I did it. Although I heard that Carl Weathers, who was at the convention, was also charging $100, which is kind of weird, seeing as that he hasn't really done any work in some time, and he's not even close to being the level of someone like Robert England. But the celebrities get to set their own prices, and I saw plenty of people in Carl Weathers' line. So, you know, it's kind of like a supply and demand thing. If you can charge it and people are going to pay it, then... You know, that's what you're going to do. But anyway, I mean, obviously my favorite thing from the convention was the Robert England signed picture. But overall, I just wanted to say Monster Mania number 40 was really good. I'm really bummed I can't go to 41 in Hunt Valley, Maryland, because like Ray Wise is going to be there. Uh, the girl who played Laura Palmer in Twin Peaks is going to be there. I forget her name. Dang it. Why do I forget her name? Well, people could tell me down below. But... Uh, or I'm a big Twin Peaks fan, so I'm sad I'm going to be missing out on that. There are some other really good people who are going to be there that I can't think of at the moment, but Monster Mania does a good job. Uh, they got things really well on track at the moment, so I'm excited to continue to go to their stuff. So that's kind of going to wrap it up for me for this video. I do want to thank everyone for checking this out. Uh, go ahead and put in the comments you know, your experiences of Monster Mania, whether you went to this one or past ones, or if you're excited for ones for the future. Um, or just want to talk about like celebrity autographs or you know ones that you have, ones you paid for, s cool stories surrounding ones that you got. But let's just you know create some nerdy comments and discussion down below, and we'll do that. You can give it a like if you like the video. You can give it a thumbs down if you don't really like the video. That's fine. But um, do me one favor, no matter what, just hit the subscribe for me. It takes you like literally, literally, sorry, <laughs> literally a second. And if you want to know every time I put up a video, you can hit the little notification bell and that'll let you know. But at the least, please just hit that subscribe because it means a lot for the growth of my channel. And to you, it's painless because it's literally like a second. So I really would appreciate that. And spread the word. If you like the videos, let people know, hey, there are these videos I like. Check them out. So thank you very much for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.